Right now, we are joined by Democratic Congressman John Garamendi of California and Republican Congressman Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee. Congressman Blackburn, first to you. Like most Republicans, you were against this law from day one. Where does the GOP go from here? I think that what we do is to uh, get busy with repealing, getting it off the books. We know that, just take women, Cheryl. Uh, you've got over 80% of all the American women that want health care to be patient-centered. And uh, you've got such opposition to this law, it's bad policy. So our focus will be on getting it off the books and moving forward to increase choice and options, decrease cost in mandates, simplify the system, restore the cuts that were made to Medicare, and let's make health care tax-free. All right, Congressman Garamendi, your response to that, the fight does not seem to be over. Well, it won't be over, but we need to understand what's in the law today. What's in the law today is the elimination of discrimination against women. You can't, women cannot be charged a higher rate than men simply because they're women. Similarly with children, newborn children mm -hmm. cannot be denied insurance coverage. If you're 18, under the old law, you would lose, 21, you would lose your health care. Now you can keep it until you're 26 with your parents. All of those patient bill of rights are in the law today, and the Supreme Court said go forward with that. We also need to understand that small businesses will receive a very, very significant reduction in the cost of their health care insurance, and there are four or five standard policies that will eventually be put into place across America through the various exchanges that each state will have so that access to quality health insurance will be available to every American. Congressman, Some access, of those Americans Congressman will access, receive subsidies. Yeah. Congressman, access, yes, yes, but here is a point, and we've been crunching the numbers here at Fox Business sure. on the impact on individuals and on businesses, in particular small businesses. Mm -hmm. They have not been happy with this, in particular, because they're concerned about the bottom line. It looks like by 2014, individuals and businesses are going to be paying an extra $37.4 billion in health care premiums under this law. That is now a law. It is the Supreme Court has verified well, yeah. it. Well, those, what happens to is, California? Those well, those will not be the very small businesses who do not have to provide the insurance at all. But for those that are above the, I think it's 20 or 25 employees, they will be subsidized and their insurance rates will no, be significantly this less. Is, this is where the difference comes in on this. What they said today is this is a tax. So what you've got is if you're not paying for this health insurance in some way, shape, or form, then you've got an IRS problem that you're going to have to deal with. And, you know, I think that the court provided some clarification today. There were many of us and there were millions of Americans who said, no, 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 this isn't about better health care in the Obamacare law. It's about a tax. Well, I and think so what we have to do is get this off the books. Well, what it's you bad took policy. Off it's not what what the American the, people wanted. We've lived through this experiment well, actually, with the public Congressman option Garibendi. health care in Tennessee. It was called health, yeah, well, uh, TenCare. Thank you. Actually, it is very good policy to end insurance discrimination. I was the insurance commissioner for eight years in California, the biggest state, and the health insurance companies would routinely discriminate against people that had pre-existing conditions. They couldn't get health insurance. Under this law, whether you are healthy or not, you will be able to get health insurance at a reasonable rate. And if you don't have the you money know, to Cheryl, buy it, you will be subsidized. Now, let me finish here. Well, no, the rest let me, of the law, let me with jump regard, in here no, wait your turn. The, with regard uh, to the law itself, yes, there is a mandate to have insurance. And that was something that the insurance companies wanted because they didn't want just sick people. They want to have a broad cross section of the community. And let, that's what's well, going to be let available. Let me provide a real life example of why sure. this doesn't work. Tennessee was the test case for public option health care. And guess what? The number of uninsured didn't go down through the test case with TenCare. You have about the same number. So what he is saying, you know, when you get this public option health care, it does not solve your problems. What is going to solve the issues that people want to see reconciled with costing too much, uh, access issues, right. what will take well, care of it right. is focusing well, on the free I, market and having a product that well, people listen, can afford. There Let actually me is a free market me, element I want to this. get your reaction to that, though. Yeah. Through the entire sure. debate from 2009 to 2012, cost control or lack thereof has been at the forefront yeah. of this. This still does not control cost. Mr. Garamendi, how would you Correct. control cost? Well, what can we do now going forward? 
Actually, there's a great deal in the bill that does control cost. And actually, with regard to Medicare, the cut in Medicare actually was a reduction in the super extra money that was given to the health insurance companies. All of that money was plowed back into benefits for seniors. It did not go anywhere else except back into Medicare. Okay. So that's just one of those red herrings yeah. out there. Now, with regard to control of cost, this bill has a major element called uh, electronic medical records, which will end a lot of the confusions, a lot of the misdiagnosis and drugs and all the rest that goes with it. There's also a very significant cost control in this okay. in holding down the profits Cheryl, of the insurance companies. I, you know, it, it, it is required. <laughs> sure. Yeah, let Go me ahead. weigh in on, on this. I've got 10 seconds, it's Ms. CBO. Yes, CBO has already said the cost has doubled just since the law was passed. You can look at what happened with TenCare. The cost quadrupled right. within five years. I'm going to have you to have the to... general The general rate of inflation <laughs> in health care. Thank you. It's you are a good parking parking on repealing. I've got to have you back. I've <laughs> got to you. have you back, Mr. Mindy. And, of course, Marshall we'll Blackburn. Thanks to both of you. I'm going to let you